What's up, people? Happy Monday. Uh, the beginning of the week. I hope all of you are having a great day. Um, okay, this episode, it, it was it was a couple hits and a couple misses. <coughs> um, Carly, I do want to talk about Carly first. I don't go in new, I don't go in order. I just, you know, you know me, I don't go in order. I, 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 Carly, let me tell you something. Carly had, there was only probably one or two things Carly said that I actually agreed with. When she said that Sonny, because you know, Sonny told Michael he should marry Sabrina. Now that she's pregnant, he should marry her. Do the right thing and marry her. I understand where Sonny's coming from on that, you know, because that's actually what I said last week about babies being born out of wedlock. And as soon as I said that, Sonny today said Michael should marry Sabrina because she's pregnant. But I feel like that's not the only reason he should marry her. I get where Sonny's coming from because a lot of old school people, if their child or their grandchild gets somebody pregnant or if they get somebody pregnant back in the old days, you would have to marry that, that woman. You would have to marry her whether you was in love with her or not. You would have to marry her. But I feel in this day and age, that's not a smart thing to do. Just because you're having a baby with somebody, that should not be the only reason you marry them. You should marry them. This is why marriage has turned into a joke. Because too many people get married just to fucking get married. And, so, and a lot of people get married just to get married. And a lot of people get married because of kids. That's not a reason you should get married. You should get married because you're in love with that person. You're passionate about that person. You, you can't see yourself with nobody else other than that person. Like, you know, that person, you and that person are one. That's why you should get married. Because the chemistry, the passion, the fire, the love is there. Not because of the baby. Um, But I, I, I agreed with Carly. You know, Sonny didn't marry every single woman that he got pregnant, which is true. But what pissed me off about Carly is she's sitting there talking about there's no passion between Michael and Sabrina. They're only together because they're comforting each other because of stuff that's happened in their life. And, um, you know, like just a bunch of stupid shit talking about they don't, they're not in love. They don't love each other. Do I think Sabrina and Michael are in love? No, I don't think they're in love with each other. I don't think they're head over heels for each other. I personally don't think that either. But I do know that they love each other. Because let me tell you something, Michael and Sabrina don't strike me as the type of people to just say, I love you to each other just to say it. I think they really do love each other. But be like I tell people all the time, you can love somebody all you want. But if you're not in love with that person, you should not be marrying them. Not to say that they can't get there, but I think they should date more. You know what I mean? And then figure out if they're in, in love. But, um... For Carly to sit there, Carly as a parent, I will say this, as a parent, she has every right to feel the way she feels, but she has to remember her son is a grown damn man. How old is Michael? 25? He's a grown goddamn man. Michael's grown. You, who the hell does Carly think she is to say, there's no way in hell I'm going to let him marry her? That's, I, I agreed with Sonny so much in this episode because he was the same person in this episode. Like, it's not up to Carly. And that's her biggest problem. She thinks everything is her fucking decision. I'm sorry, but everything's not up to you when it comes to your kids, especially when it comes to your adult children. It's not up to you. Sorry. If he wants to marry her, he's going to marry her. There ain't a damn thing you can do about it, but sit up there and smile and put on a smile and, and pretend to like it. That's all you can do. It's not up to you, sweetie. I'm so sick and tired of Carly acting like she's the, the queen bitch and she has to say the final word on everything. Sorry, but that's you don't have the final say on everything. Maybe at the Metro Court, but not in your kid's love life. <clears throat> Sorry about that, but you don't have the say in your kid's love life. Um, So Michael actually did propose to Sabrina, but she turned down his marriage proposal. And I'm curious to find out what is her reason. Maybe it's because she thinks Carlos is the father of the baby. I, 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 I'm I, having a hard time wrapping my mind around the possibility of how Carlos could be the father of this baby. I just feel like it's so stupid. It's like it's unrealistic. I mean, come on. You can't. You, no. Hell no. 
what are they is it's so dumb. Um anyway, moving on. Dante and Lulu went to the hospital to go see Dr. Lee. You know what's so funny? I remember Dr. Lee when she was Claudia's doctor and she was Carly's doctor. Remember when Carly and Claudia were married at the same time? I miss Dr. Lee. She looks so good. Um, <clears throat> I am so sick of the storyline between Dante and Lulu and this baby shit. I, I just ref I didn't even want to talk about this. Like It's so boring. They need to, the writers need to focus more on the drama that's going on with them instead of trying to create something that, that shouldn't even be created, like another baby storyline. Like, you're throwing another baby into the mix on top of the drama that's already going on. And what's so funny is Lulu said they're going to start the procedure after Halloween, the day after Halloween. I found that so funny because I think that's when the reveal is going to come out. I think it's going to come out Friday. Because remember, she's having that big Halloween party at the Hornet Star. So I think Friday is when she's going to find out he fucked Valerie. So that's why I think she specifically said we're going to start the procedure the day after Halloween. Why specifically say that if there's nothing to it? Maybe I'm overthinking, but that's my theory. Because that Halloween party's just been in the back of my mind with this whole storyline that that's when shit is about to go down. And if it don't, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> this storyline needs to come out ASAP because I'm ready for it. I want to see how Lulu handled this shit. And I mean, let me tell you what my expectations are. I expect Lulu to slap the dog shit out of Valerie, then slap the dog shit out of Dante. And I expect divorce papers to be filed. That's what I expect. I, did. I expect fireworks. That's That's all I'm saying. That's what my expectations are. Maybe yours is different, but that's mine. I expect all I expect all hell breaking loose on the Hornet Star. But I feel like it's dumb for them to have another baby. Number one, your marriage is not stable. Two, you live in a dumpy ass apartment with a two year old already who's about to be three next year. Like seriously, that apartment is way too small. I can't stress that enough. Like, get a bigger fucking place. Or are you gonna build another room? Like, do something. Just make it bigger. Because kids, they have a lot of toys, they have a lot of amenity, you know, accessories and stuff. That apartment is too small for one child, let alone two. You, be I mean, come on, two? Hell no, You, there's no way. And how, that's going to fuck y'all privacy up, because what if y'all want to get down with the get down? How you going to do that with two babies in, in the room, literally right next to you, with no doors, no wall? How you going to do that? It would be so uncomfortable. I wouldn't want to do have sex with kids right next door where there's no door. no Hell no. Hell no. That's too uncomfortable. Sorry. Nope. I'd be getting me a nice, another place with walls and separate bedrooms. Not one room in a living room. Hell no. Mm -mm. Sorry. Nope. Um. Anyway. So, Diane, the queen bitch of the legal profession. I miss Diane so much. That, I love her. Oh, my. Diane. The writers have, have done a, you've done a fantastic job. The producers bring her back. When she walked in a room, I just, a smile came over my face. I said, yes, hallelujah. And she was in full form today, too. And she gave, Eliz I mean, she gave Sam a little piece of advice. About the whole J Jason Patrick thing. And I had to agree with Diane. I mean, I like Sam and Patrick together. Don't get me wrong. I do. But I have to agree with Diane. Sam is a daredevil. She's adventurous. And that's what she loved most about Jason. Was because he kept her on her toes. They always had something going on. Patrick is more a homebody. You know, dinner, movie. You know, expensive restaurants, big ass diamond ring on her finger. That's not Sam. She's more down to earth, takeout, Chinese, stakeout, shootouts. That's more her thing. You know, that's more her. Like, you know, she's adventurous and Patrick is not really like that. You know what I mean? He's more of a homebody, work, home, chill with the family kind of guy. And there's nothing wrong with that, but that's not her personality. So it, it's a conflict there. So I definitely agree with Diane on that one. Um, 
And Diane, of course, got Spinelli off the hook for his little legal infraction, which pissed Jordan off. You know the, you know the PCPD don't never win, and you know you can't keep Spinelli down not for long, um, especially with the queen bitch on his side. Um, the Elizabeth situation, I was just so sick to my stomach with this. Her sitting there telling Jake all this bullshit, little Jake. About how Jake is going to become his stepdad. And I, I just want to mute the TV. Like, bitch, shut up. Playing your kids like this. Like, really? She's despicable. I'm sorry. She's a horrible human being. Off with that bitch's head. That's all I got to say. Where's the guards? Just off with her head. And Jake even told Sam. If he finds certain things out about his, about his past, he's prepared to walk away from Elizabeth. I said, Jake... Well, you're going to be in for a doozy, brother, because when you find out that you're Jason, you will walk away from that trash. And that's what you need to do. Walk away from that broad because she ain't going to bring you nothing but a lifetime of misery. Look at Lucky. Look at Nicholas, please. She destroyed their relationship all because she couldn't keep her legs closed. Fucking Nicholas in the barn when she was engaged to Lucky. Like, seriously, and Lucky was trying to build them a house and everything. And look what she did. Whore. Straight whore from the fucking trailer park that's what she is that's where she belongs a trailer park not the nice house in the suburbs that jason paid for so she can have a nice place to live no send that bitch packing take the kids get custody of the kids lucky needs to come get custody of aiden and cameron jason needs to get custody of jay and let that bitch go live in the trailer park and sell that house and get your money back that's all i got to say because she don't deserve a nice house and obviously she can't afford that house on a nurse's salary a job in which she barely, you know, she's she barely at work anyway, and she doesn't do a good job there any fucking way. So dismiss that bitch, cause she's despicable. Um. Anyway, what else happened in this episode? I'm trying to think. What else happened? I think that's everything in this episode. I think it is, cause I don't remember what else happened in this episode. Maybe I'm forgetting, or it wasn't that important. Um. If I'm forgetting something, just let me know in the comments and we could talk about it in the comments or whatever. And I give my thoughts on it. Um, so anyway, I hope all you have a great day. Um, if not tomorrow, I'll see you all Wednesday. Have a great day.